kidding? Nothing to somebody for doing these horrible things in abroad. What we have to do, we have to actually prove that they made the decision while in, on U.S. soil and planned to go to that foreign country to do those horrible things. Now, what happened is we had some fantastic uh, people that stepped up and said, no, we're going to change that law. And now what has happened is that if you go to another country, a foreign country, if you go in there and rob a bank or whatever, we have to extradite you to that country. You have to pay for it in that country. This, this is very different in that not only now can you get prosecuted in that country, but whether you do or whether you don't, you also can get prosecuted here in the U.S. for going abroad and being with a child like that. Man, so this is that's absolutely a, that's, a, that's a win. But uh, I will say this. There's um, – and we've worked with a number of other countries in getting their trade status where they need to be with the U.S. There, there are certain rules in place where if they are not, not upholding these rules and fighting trafficking, then, then, they're, then they're not going to have the trade status that they want. And so we were down in, in Guatemala recently, and we went through all of the lists that the State Department had of things that they could improve on to fix the trafficking challenges there. So we were working with the top level political and government officials and helping them change those things. And we said, listen, these are the things right here that we can personally help with to bring your status where it needs to be. Many times what would happen is in these foreign countries, our, our operators, back when some of our guys who are former CIA, FBI, et cetera, when they would go in and say, hey, we wanna help with your trafficking, these foreign countries are like, you know, kind of button heads with them now. As a private organization, as these 501c3s like ours, the Child Liberation Foundation, you can go to liberateachild.org or liberatechildren.org. But can we, can, we we would, uh, can we put that pin then on the stop real quick? If you guys yeah. Mind. I, I really okay. like to pin that on the stop because I just want to make sure that the people understand that like a lot of this stuff is privately funded. So anything that you can give to this is super, super, super necessary. That's like, that's how you get involved right now. I can and on that web page on the, the liberatechildren.org, you can find other ways you can get involved. Not only <clears throat> to be able to donate, but there are a lot of things that people can do to help from a healing standpoint, et cetera. So spend some time on there and you'll find ways that you can get involved and participate. But what I would say in that now as a five one C three, now as a charity organization, we can go into those countries and say, listen. We will work with you. We will work under your laws. We'll talk work with the top federal agents there, and we'll say we will do all the work. We will pay for everything, and we will give you all the credit. Your people will think you're heroes. They'll think that, that the bad guys got arrested. Um, they'll think that we Americans, when we did the undercover, that we were the bad guys as well. All we ask for is that the real bad guys stay in jail for good. They don't get around your system. And number two – we have full access to the children and getting them rehabilitated and back to their families or hey, hey, Paul, in a new healthy family. Paul, quick question. Hey, hey Nelson. Have you, you ever know? literally met a child like, I need to take this kid home with me? Because I, I don't know how, like, you Absolutely. have met this many ch children and how you've been like, I would be like, I'd be coming home with children every week. <laughs> like, I would, Absolutely. We were in uh, we were in the Dominican Republic, and this trafficker who was a, a felon, he was an escaped felon from the U.S., was providing a whole bunch of children. Wait, wait a second, Paul, that was, Paul, Paul yeah. could, you, could you just put the link in our chat real quick, just because we want to pin that link to the room. And guys, um, real quick, I don't mean to interrupt you, Paul, but I had a conversation with Dave today. Um, these guys need to raise a couple million bucks um, because they want to go deep. They, I mean, they. I, when I spoke to Dave today, he's like, Jeremy – He's like, if I went into your backyard and did a thing, you would find 60 people that would come out and hook up with, a, like, a 9-year-old right, right now, right now. He's like, right in your backyard. He's like, so I want, I want to put operatives everywhere. That's exactly what we need. We, we need to realize this. Every single time we arrest a pedophile, we're not just saving one child. We're saving up to 100 to 150 children that that person would, would traumatize during their lifetime. So putting them in a place where they cannot spread that, that trauma to more people is super important. Absolutely. And, and, hey, Paul. But, but answer to your question of wanting to take one home, one, one example just, just not too long ago, we were, in, uh, we were in the Dominican Republic in this 
this uh, escaped convict had been trafficking a bunch of children. That's where he was making all of his money. And he connected us with a woman who was outright selling, not just, you know, complicit and saying, take him for the night, outright selling her children, a nine-year-old and 11-year-old. She wanted $10,000 a piece for them. These children knew they were being sold by their mother. They thought, and she thought, that we were taking them to Miami to work in a, in a sex club and sell. And she said to me on the phone, she said, Pablo, when you're done with them, if you're ever done with them, I don't ever want this to come back on me. She said, you hear me? I said, what do you mean? She said, when you're done with them, you need to be done with them. She was basically telling me to, uh, to, to take her children out if she didn't want them ever to come back and say, what did you sell me to that for? And I was so sickened by that mother. And, and I couldn't imagine what was going through these kids' minds knowing that their mother was selling them like that. And that's one operation that breaks my heart because some things went wrong from a government standpoint, and a couple of the traffickers actually got in, in it with each other. That felon got shot and ended up in, in the hospital on life support. They called off the entire mission, and I didn't have direct access to that mother to be able to get her kids. So those kids, those kids probably are bounced around in the system. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, Paul. Yeah, so, well, go ahead, Jonathan. Go ahead. You sure? Uh, yeah, Paul. It sounds like this is more of a social economical uh, thing. Is this just uh, what what children are at risk? Okay, because you you seem like you you get not just one country. You've been all over. Uh, oh. The world, the globe, it seems like. So can you tell us uh, yeah, what children are at risk and, and you know, and how can we spot this if, if uh, you know, that a child is possibly uh, being uh, trafficked? Here's the answer. All children are at risk. However, the highest percentage of the children that were being sold and trafficked in this way came from broken homes, came as, as runaways, came from the foster system came from impoverished areas where the parents, 50% of the, the children we rescued in Thailand were sold by their own families. And, and so poverty may, makes a play there. However, the reason I say everybody, we were in multiple operations where the traffickers were bringing in their victims through surfing the social media accounts, finding out where children were being, you know, what, what kids maybe were on vacation without their, their parents at the time, or maybe they can identify where they, where they were, what their schedules were, et cetera. Having a child that has an open social media account that anybody can see what they're doing and where they are is super dangerous. But I will say this, here's the problem that really is at the core of all of it right here. For a long time, I thought, where does this demand come from? Is this demand coming from, you know, hardcore pornography usage where, you know, these guys get addicted, really addicted, and then they, they go down a dark road because they're objectifying women, and then they need something harder to have that same fix? And I thought that that was the problem. It's not. That's, that is part of the that – is, that, is, that is a symptom of a deeper problem just like trafficking is. And here's the deeper problem. Literally – one out of every four of the women on this podcast right now who are listening right now, one out of every four of them have been a victim of sexual violence as a child. As a child. Now, for, for men, it's a lower number. It's roughly one in five, about 20% at some time in their life have been a victim. But 25% of them literally 200 million men. It was under the age of 10 years old, most of them in their own homes. So here's what's happening. We've got generational trauma and, and two thirds of the people who have dealt with that childhood trauma, God bless them, two thirds of them grow up to be good husbands, good fathers, good wives, good uncles, and, and they, they figure out how to work through that. And they use it as motivation to make sure that nobody ever hurts a child on their watch. However, one out of three people who experience that trauma as a child, one out of three, become contact offenders. Now, people ask me all the time, Paul, how can you go face-to-face -face with somebody 
selling you a child and you looking them in their eyes and smiling and giving them a hug and making them think that you love them is, and, and excited about this party you're setting up. How can you do that without them seeing the anger and hatred in your eyes? And my answer surprises them. It's because in a way I feel compassion. And, and they're like, you can't feel that, you know, but they're doing these horrible things. Yeah, no, I'll do everything in my power to ensure they never hurt another child again. But more than anything, I wish that I had a time machine and I could go back. I could go back a year, five years, 10 years before they ever, ever, ever touched a child or hurt a child like that and figure out what happened in their life, what road they made a wrong turn on to make them get to the point where they thought that it was okay to sell me an eight-year-old child. And I realized that most of them, if not 99% of them, had severe trauma themselves as a child. Most of them were raped as children themselves. And so to step back and say, okay, to really fix this problem, just going undercover and pulling 20 children out at, at a time was never going to fix the problem. We had to fix the demand side. How do we fix that? We go all the way back to the point where these kids as adolescents and young adults that are holding on to this trauma and say, okay, can we create systems in place that allow these people to get the help that they need to shed their own trauma before they ever pass that trauma on to somebody else? That's what liberating humanity is all about, not just rescuing a 10-year-old from the clutches of a trafficker in Honduras. But, but rescuing the 10-year-old inside of every 20, 30, 40-year-old man or woman that is on this call right now. Man, this is crazy, crazy. Ladies and gentlemen on Clubhouse and Twitter, listen, man, we're live right now discussing. Um, I don't even know what to say. Oh, it's just cra- I, I, I'm lost for words, bro. It's this crazy. This is some of the darkest stuff I've ever experienced. Ever. You know, and Story you know, we're live here with Paul Hutchinson. And I think that anybody that has children, up Jeremy, there, can you hear me? They just yeah. feel completely sick to their stomach. Je- okay, um, I, th- I think you lost signal. Jonathan, Paul, text him. Jeremy, you um, you can't hear Nelson talking. It's gonna get a little deep. Do you mind? All right, let me let me just tuck him down and bring him back up. It seems like he's losing signal. Um, yeah, guys. So we're live here with Paul Hutchinson. Um executive producer of you know the movie the crazy movie that everyone's talking about right now out in cinemas by the way sound Sound of freedom Freedom. and of course the crazy thing about this movie is this is a true life story this is something that happened this is something that is ongoing and this is something that paul and his organization liberate children.org is doing you know so much to combat and to fight but um, right now, I want to direct everybody on Clubhouse and Twitter to the thread at the very top of the page. Hit the thread at the very top of the page and dive into that thread across all those tweets. Most importantly, on the last tweet, you're going to see the website to Paul's Foundation, which is liberatechildren.org. And, you know, all I can say to you guys before we continue right now with Paul is get involved. I mean, again... For every human being in this, in both of these spaces right now, I mean, we're talking about eight, nine hundred people across both of these channels right now. For every single one of us that have children, or have little nephews, little nieces, little brothers, little sisters, ki- I, listen, you have to do something. We have to do something. This is crazy stuff. Nelson, can, Nelson, can you I hear me? I cannot believe Nelson. this is happening. Absolutely. Nelson, can you hear me? Um, Paul, can you hear me? Jeff, Paul, can you hear Nelson? Can you hear? Can I get one mic, please? Oh, just appreciate it. Go ahead, Jeremy. Paul, I'd like to ask you a question. It's going to get a little deep, but, you know, I just want to get the real answers. How far deep does this go into, like, political, Epstein Island, celebrity? How far, does, how deep does this rat rabbit hole lead? I mean, does this rabbit hole lead? I, put it this way. Our battle to bring this movie to the world was so difficult we were we were blocked on every angle from every part of of hollywood we had we had originally we had got some commitments from from fox international and latin america that put a couple million in with us in the movie and they were going to do distribution as soon as disney bought them they kiboshed that idea immediately and and requested us to refund the money because they didn't want to be a part of something like this so then we put that money together, took them out, 
ended up taking this all over to different distribution channels, trying to get this out with Amazon, with Netflix and others, and got blocked everywhere. The only way we were able to bring this to the world was on a true grassroots effort. And the platform that we used to do that, because they, they, that's what they do is grassroots stuff, is, is Angel Studios, who brought the, the TV series The Chosen. And they have the ability to just reach out to their network. And this was you, – you watch on, on Main Street Media. You don't see this anywhere, nowhere. Nobody's advertising anything. The only reason why we did we, – we beat out all these other big, huge movies is because of good – people getting together and saying, you know what, I'm going to share this, I'm going to expand this, I'm going to make a difference, I'm going to stand up. So yes, it's, it's, it's pervasive there. I will tell you this too. If anybody yeah, on this call thinks false, that false. Jeffrey Epstein committed suicide, then you've got, you've got another thing coming. That's, he, that's why I've got a three-part question that I want to touch yeah. on. So w one, you just answered that. Two, I've been seeing a bunch of reports of all these really weird things happening in theaters across the country where like the AC goes out or the projector's yep. not working or the light's not working or the sound. And it seemed like it's happened across the world. Can Everywhere. someone bring Brian Benz back up, please? Oh, there he is. Um, someone bring Brian up. Uh, so that's actually happening is what you're saying. Like it's, it's happening in theaters across the country. There, there is. I've got reports from, from people all over that have been saying this. Now, there's other reports saying, yeah, that we went in and it's completely full. I will say this. The theaters that aren't messing with us, they are full. And this is the first movie in a long time where people stay to the very end. They watch the credits. They, they do a standing ovation. This will change your life when you watch it. And, and it's take a box of tissues. It'll make you mad, but it won't. It won't. We, we were we were super delicate with a dark dark subject you know there's there's no there, there's there's we you you know what's going on behind the closed doors but there's there's nothing that you have to see you know what i mean question? sure it, and third thirdly one part is, um how does this stuff tie, tie in directly to jeffrey epstein and glenn maxwell if you don't mind <laughs> okay let me put it this way if you if you wanted to control the votes of senators, of congressmen, of judges, if you wanted to control those votes, and, and the guys who are really in control are not the ones that you guys vote in, I'll just tell you that. So if you wanted to control all of those, the very best way to control them is blackmail, is to get that level of dirt on those people so why in the world would they ever want that list to be public why because if they did those guys would all either go to jail or we would vote them out of office and then we have brand new people in office that they have to corrupt that they've got to get that degree of dirt on so that's paul, the reason we haven't seen the list i'll tell you straight out paul I, you put me on the phone with somebody from the blackwater camp today yep um, i'm not going to go into detail but what i will tell you is that he was extremely deep. You guys probably, I mean, the, 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 I mean, the ex-president of Blackwater stood on this guy's board for, for days, right? And what he told me on the phone was that Sounds really gruff. I, can't, I don't even know how to say this, but there, there are literally um, agencies that set up these people yep. with these children. And they could then that's how they control the politicians. Exactly. To do what they want them to do is they invite them out to these places. They watch this stuff go down. They film it. And then they're like, they got you. J Jeremy. And like, I know that sounds like conspiracy kook no, though. No, it's just... But when you hear it from several, like, very serious, like, these are like men's men. These are guys who have seen combat, who've gone in, who have taken out a lot of people. And they're in there. They're in there. They're on wartime for these children. I mean, I, if you, could you just go down that and just kind of touch on that? Yeah, you're the, the, how one, trained these guys. And one hundred percent, spot on, spot on. Agencies that, when I say, you know, the guys that you vote in are not the guys that are really pulling the strings. They're having their strings pulled. That's what's going on. That's what's going on. So 
So isn't and, that and the appeal of Trump? What's that? that? Wasn't that there was the, one thing I was gonna say to you? I just I didn't interrupt. Trump, Trump, Trump was say, Trump. Trump what did more to fight trafficking than than any president that just sat around just waiting for something and, to happen. And isn't that why they killed him? I mean, they they they, they did you know they, they assassinated him in a different way. But I think yeah. he was the guy with the border. He was the guy shutting down Epstein. He was the guy exposing this stuff. And, and they ran him out of town. They Absolutely, of town. because he he couldn't be bought, and they didn't have dirt on him like this because he would never go there. He was he was he was as fallible as the rest of us, right? You know, yeah, he had a girlfriend here, and he, you know, worked through that. He's got a healthy marriage now, but they're trying to bring up all this dirt. But you and I, all of us, saw through it, and we're like, no. I'm betting there's a lot more dirt on you guys that's not being brought out, and that's the truth. You know, the, the child, Jeremy, the child trafficking and what they're doing to these children is so non-believable that we, we can't understand it. So, therefore, we think it's conspiracy. We think it's fake. But look, look at what Rogan said last week. Seventy kids are found in uh, Georgia uh, in, in one of these houses where they were, they were all, all kidnapped. And, and it gets two seconds of news. Where are the journalists asking the question, how, who, why, what was the outcome, what was going to be the outcome for these kids, who, who's responsible? What happened to Abiche? He makes a video so clearly defining this, and all of a sudden he ends up dead. Come on, guys. I mean, they connect the dots. And, and Epstein did not kill himself. No way. No. Paul, can I say... Um, firstly, thank God for people like you. Um, you've actually restored a certain amount of faith in humanity just by what you've said so far today. When are you running for office? And even though I don't live in your country, I'm all very <laughs> people. But the book, There's, I, I did you... a podcast a long time ago called Kings and Kingmakers. And, uh, you know, I, I, I helped to put the money together to put a lot of good people in office. And... A number of the people stayed true to their word of why they went in, and a number of them, unfortunately, I could see the very moment that they were bought, the very moment that there was dirt on them, that their votes were being controlled. And I'm like, wait a minute. This isn't the man that you were. You were a man of integrity. You were a man that stood up to, to tyrants. You were a man that no matter what, you weren't going to play this political game. And here you are. Do they have dirt on you? What's going on? And I see it over and over again. And so, so you know, it takes it takes people like Trump, like myself, like others who are like, you know what? No, I don't care what you say about me. I'm 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 going to do the right thing. A man with integrity expects to be believed. And when he's not, he lets time prove him right. And that goes the same with the people who are out of integrity. Time will, will prove everything, and you'll realize how many of those people sold out. Paul, 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 Sean, Wolfington, Sean Wolfington is a good friend of mine. I uh, love Sean. Sean. told me about this movie that he was working with people on, and I never knew it was at this magnitude, nor that it was this movie. What an incredible – Eduardo uh, is, is, is great. And what yeah, great Eduardo, Eduardo plays me in the film. Yeah, Eduardo, Eduardo, I know for, for many years, and, and uh, I, I, I didn't know, he, Sean was so quiet about what you guys were doing, he didn't tell me that this was a movie that Mel Gibson was working on, and uh, it, it really can have an amazing impact, and, and really expose the light on the, in these themes, these apps. I come in these apps, and I, I'm so passionate about what's going on with the pedophiles, and everyone just blows it off. Nah, it's not you're crazy. Eight hundred thousand kids a year are missing. In the Brian, one hundred percent. It's it's totally and, totally happening. Like it. And and they, and they make me out to be the crazy paranoia. Oh, you're homophobic. No, I'm not homophobic. I'm not transphobic. I but but the pedophiles. They're trying to normalize this, calling it adult, uh, minor attracted adults, changing the very definition of these freaks, these monsters. And, and so they just they did you hear about what happened in California where they um they didn't uh, there was some law that was going to make 
Um, I guess the punishment for human trafficking really severe that got shot down. I need to figure out which one it is. But you know what? This is the but, shit but, but, that pisses but, but, me who, off. But let me but, just but, say but, this, but, Brian. But, hey, so, hey, who voted? Yes. Who voted, voted to shot to shoot that down? Right. You already know, but this is the thing, right? So you just brought up what happened in Georgia, and the thing is, is that a lot of people they don't have the same fucking energy. Right. And like, like, why not go have the same energy that you have towards, you know, any of this political shit, all of this, like, very unimportant, definitely ain't shit compared to this. And, 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 you know, talk to the news media. We need to, like, if, if we're not saying that we as the people demand to know about this, this is your fucking ma- ma- job. Ma- yeah, ma- well, one second, one second, one second, one second, guys. Ben Stock, one second. Ben Stock, one second. Ben Stock, one second. Ben Stock, one second. Hey, guys, listen to me. We want to keep this on the children. We don't want to get into our political rants here. We want to keep this on the children. We want to keep it focused no, 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 on no, the children. No, 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 I, no, I know no. we... Minister, hold up. We just want to keep this focused on the children. And this gentleman, we only have him for a very limited time. He has a, uh, he has, he's a wealth of information and a wealth of experience. And I want, I want to make sure that uh, everyone in here gets to hear this information. And, and, be, and besides, they, they need to raise some funds as well. We want to make sure that's handled as well. So let's keep this on the children. Let's keep this, uh, let's keep this focused. Because we can all that stuff we're talking about right now, we speak about it every night here. We have a very unique situation. Let's take Jonathan, advantage of it. Let me, let, me, let me get back in. So can you guys hear me, by the way? So how do we raise funds? Let's get that out. That's I'm here. This is Chef Andy. And I'm working with Paul. All right. Um, listen, it seems like we, we may have too many people on the stage. We may have to readjust the stage, okay? We're, we're, we're trying to keep this on Paul. Keep this on Liberate Children. Keep this on, of course, the movie itself. So, Nelson, can you hear me? Jeremy, let's do it. Can you it. hear me? Okay. Let's do it, Jeremy. Okay, because before I couldn't, I was like having a conversation with myself, and I think I was, <laughs> it was weird. Paul, um, so first of all, let me, let's just, there were, there were three things I want to ask, and, and it's broken down into questions. Uh, one, uh, the funding that you're trying to raise, right? Where can people go to donate to where does the funds go to? Let's just start with one and two real quick, and then I have a third. Paul, the mic is at the uh, bottom left-hand corner of your, of your phone, bottom left corner. Paul, your microphone's muted right now. Your microphone <laughs> is muted. I put his link in the um, nest. I hope you don't mind, uh, Nelson, the, the Child Liberation Foundation, just so oh, it's easier to find. Yeah, Paul, you heard, gotcha. Sorry about you that. You heard my questions, Paul? Yes, I did. So, yeah. So, Child Liberation Foundation, uh, we can go to liberatechildren.org. And uh, two immediate needs. Number one, the Child Liberation Foundation coordinates and collaborates with other organizations like the one that Dave Lopez is. These guys are, there's, there's so many former operators that worked as guys in the, in the dark, so to speak. When, when, we, when we did the Cartagena rescue that this movie was about, there were so many operators that were unsung heroes that have spent the last 10 years really doing the work. So we've, we're working with their foundations we're raising a couple million dollars right now to fund some operations with, with Dave's organization, and and those are, that's one of the ones that we're going to take you on undercover, take down these rings. Uh, they're averaging about 30 pedophiles a month, about one a day is what their average is that they're taking down right now, which is just fantastic. Actively, actively operating and, and taking down these rings. Number two, through the through uh, we have. Uh, through the Child Liberation Foundation, we have what we call liberating wings. We've got the dark Rambo side and we've got the light side. And we like to have at least 50% of everything we bring in focused on the healing, not just focus on the, 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 the bringing in the guns and taking out the bad guys. And so from a healing standpoint, they have a new project called Liberating Wings, where like your angel wings, but it's the wing, uh, a physical wing of a building. So we're taking all of the safe houses of the children that we've done rescues for over the last 10 years. And we're going in with these safe houses and we're building physical extensions on those specifically designed for healing because it's a lot of these safe houses just have, have beds for the kids and a place for the psychologist to come in and talk to them in the lobby and whatnot. But this is, this is something where we're putting a lot of time and focus into programs and systems to heal the children so those are two things that are 
that we're actively raising for right now. Um, and we have a we have a couple big events that we're putting on. We're having a, a fundraiser. I heard uh, the singing chef, Chef Andy, popped on a little bit earlier. He's helping us with a fundraiser in Miami. It's going to take a few hundred thousand dollars to put that on, and we'll raise millions of dollars with the right people later this year. So again, you know, dollars turning into more dollars, but those everything where, in the where foundation do we is focused. Where do we contribute? You can go to liberatechildren.org. You can just click on the donate button right there. You can contribute as little as five dollars a month or five dollars just one time. You can. We had a guy just uh, just the other day that that uh, tapped in ten thousand dollars. We've had some bigger commitments. Um, hey, Jeremy, that, come on, let's put uh, ten thousand. Uh, listen, uh, Paul, I have some people in the room who are some uh, very decent sized investors who. I'm not going to point them out and make them feel uncomfortable, but I can tell you that I have people in the room who are very, very deep, deeply affected by this. So I'm, I'm pretty sure. And, and, and what I want to offer to them, OMB. If, 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 they're, if they're big players like that and want to contribute on a big way, give them my personal That's my plan. cell That's phone. My plan. Yeah, give them connect with me personally. I don't, I don't need you know ten thousand people that are wanting me to donate to their shit. But if you have people that are that are players that really want to make a difference out there, Jeremy, that we could even take them off with me, connect them with. I'm me. all in. Like, look, I, I've been just so you know, Brian, all day, and and Paul will tell you this. My team has been creating assets, putting up Instagram, setting up TikToks, like doing everything we can. Paul, you can be like, hey, hey, listen, you got you got Rasha here. You got Mays here. Every night they're banging on this freaking issue too, and, and and just banging to bring awareness. So we got a lot of champions here. Barbara Majeski. Well, and here's the other thing too. Alone. Get Leave me on stages. Alone. If if you've got if you've got mega influencers, the best thing we can do as well is is put me on well, stages. Paul. And if and if those stages we don't want to go as dark, we can we can stay on the light just, side. But the world needs to hear this. Just message. a heads up. I'm actually doing no, a press. dark dark is. Dark is where you get people to to, to do something. Yeah, that's you know, just adds up. Ben stuff. Bumping around on this, dancing around, having people tell you oh, it's not as bad as they think no, it, it is. Bad. No, it's it's much worse. See, just a heads up. So <clears throat> we actually set up. We're setting up a press run where we're going to be taking him on like every single show, like Stuart Varney, like all this stuff. So Barbara, obviously, I would I love you lend some support because he hasn't hit national TV yet. So you know, I called. I'm trying to get him on Stuart Varney. I'm trying to get on all the shows that really matter. Um, and Barbara can lend some ears to that because the power is, the, is, is spreading the word and getting him in front of people to tell people this. Because, look, I'm going to just say it, and, like, you know, Paul, you can choose to back me up on this or not. The people that run the media are 90% of the people that are involved in this type of shit. I'm I'm sorry for saying that. It sounds crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Where our our main street media and the and and the the real guys behind check your text, the Paul. show on a lot of social media, absolutely. Check check your text, absolutely. Paul. Check the text that I just sent you. Yep. You saw right. what, I, what I just said to you, right? Real quick, real quick, real quick. Um, just to circle back to it, right, guys. So, for you guys in the room that want to do something, that want to help out, that want to get involved. Um, we have the link at the very top of the page for you guys on Clubhouse. Tap that link and do whatever you can to assist. Again, you know, the whole purpose of this is fighting to end, you know, child trafficking, right? Fighting to end child trafficking. Um, for you guys on Twitter, space it, just scroll all the way to the top of the page. Hit that link and get involved, right? But, Paul, I definitely want to take it back to something you said in regards to actually getting this movie to come out right you mentioned disney and what they did when they bought the um distribution company handling the movie in question what happened next and how did you guys finally get this movie put together and of course rolled out it, it took private investors to come up with the money to take out the 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 ones who are trying to control it so we had some some good people that came in i have some of my operators right from the beginning were investors in the film um the the producer who plays me in the film went out after as many of his connections as possible and it was it was a fight to do so and unfortunately and here's the thing back back uh, what about 
seven years ago. I was, I we had taken um, so a really big influencer, the 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 largest, most respect. Maybe you guys, I'll just tell him Tony Robbins. You guys already know he's such a huge advocate. We were talking. I was I was working. This, bro. I yeah, to Tony is a rock star, and he he came with us with another foundation that I was working with at the time. And and full disclosure, I'll just tell it straight out right here. That was through Operation Underground Railroad and working with him. I made a clean break from them five years ago, something I'm not going to talk about the why online here, but a very clean break from them. But it was beautiful to be able to have people like Tony come and see those operations first firsthand and similar to what Jeremy, you're going to do and see some of these firsthand. And it rocked his world to actually see Real that. Quick, I had Paul, been deep cover in Haiti. Yeah. Not trying to interrupt you, but Cindy Stumpel has a show on uh, iHeartRadio and she's in here and she, she would like to interview you as well. Like that's, that's, that's how this works. Like the only way this works is if people get loud and talk about it. Paul, can, I, I just want to ask you, because I'm going to roll out this question. Is there a particular group of people in the world that hush this shut up that are really powerful people? Honestly, just be straight up. Um, yeah, I'll just be straight up and understand this. I come from a place where I'm connected with the most powerful people on the planet with my fund. One share in my fund is a million dollars. And you, most of the people that I met with were $100 million families, and a lot of them were, were really good, decent people. But you get up to the to the ones who are really running the world. Say the name. I mean, we're talking say like it. like the, the builder, like the, I'm just going to say it, the Bilderberg Group. Boom. You know, there's 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 organizations that, that meet behind closed doors that are the ultra elite. I mean, if you think that I'm elite because I'm the founder of a multi-billion dollar fund, hell no. Hell no. You know, these guys make me look like a pauper. And those are the ones who are really pulling. I mean, do you think that the Federal Reserve is federal, really, right? So the, 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 the guys behind the money, the guys behind the narrative. In fact, I'll, I'll tell you this. This will scare the crap out of you. Years ago, I had just passed $2 billion in assets under management with the fund. I started getting invited to some very elite uh, meetings with people, kind of investment groups, with some of the, the who's who of the who's who. And one of them in particular that I went to, there was there was a lot of people that were representing multi, multi-billion, billion-dollar families that were there. And one of the guys that stood up, this was in 2012, he stood up and, and he, it was his, his turn to present, and he puts up this, this, um, this presentation he said, this is the current population of the world right now. And he, he says, this is what it's going to be this year. And by 2020, 2020, it'll be this. And 2030, it'll be this. And he says, this is unsustainable. He said, he said, with the baby boomer age getting bigger of a percentage every single year, he said, by 2016, starting then, every year for the next 40 years, the percentage of the population over 65 years old and leaving the workforce will increase. Anyway, long story short, it was a depopulation conversation. And and these ultra elites were there, and I got sick to my stomach, and I thought, this is how they see us? Really? Population. And so if they see us in that light, you can imagine what they're trying to do with, with the rest of this crap. So do you think there is – Let's just let's just touch on the Jeffrey thing for a second because Jeffrey Epstein is like the number one like most talked about sex trafficking ring. Would you say that Jeffrey Epstein was an operative for the government and was put in place with his eight hundred million dollar fund, which nobody found where the money ever came from, and he had secrets on everybody? Would you believe that he was a government operative? Honestly, here's what I will say. Yeah. So here's what I will say. People ask me questions all the time. Hey, Paul, tell me what you think about adrenochrome. What do you think about the tunnels? And what do you think about this? I believe that most of that stuff is real. I believe he was an operative. Now, for me to outright say it with credibility, I wasn't there. What I will do is tell you the things that I was physically there. I have seen the darkest depravity of human nature. I have seen it firsthand. I have seen the massive demand 
for trafficking. I have seen the software that goes on the dark web and identifies the people who are downloading child rape videos. That's right. If you're listening to this and you think that you're being anonymous and you're on the dark web and you're downloading this shit, you're not. We, we've identified global identifier numbers on each of those computers and in one month identifies 800 – in the United States alone, 800,000 unique individuals who had downloaded a child rape video. Horrible. So those things I can testify to because I was there and I have seen them. This other stuff, I'm just I'm, – I'm like you. I'm seeing it. I'm, I'm, I've got some inside connections. Now, somebody like Dave would know more because he's, he's worked with – He's got connections in 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 that level of the special ops guys who who have seen that stuff firsthand. And so, yes, I believe it. Yes, I have people that I know that have seen it. But but if I haven't seen it, I don't I don't go out and say yes, absolutely. Donations, donations. Uh, this is Chef Andy. Uh, thanks so much, Paul. This guy is. Unbelievable. He came over my house. We had dinner together with his whole family. I fed them. I sang with them. They had my sauces. And I'll tell you what, I'm on board 110%. We're working on a big fundraiser, donate to Child Liberation Foundation, probably at the uh, October uh, in Miami. And uh, everybody's invited to that. And thank you so much, Paul, for being in my life and doing God's work. And uh, this is Chef Andy. Thank you so much. Thanks, Andy. No, 100%, man, 100%. Um, you know, Paul, you know, I definitely want to, you know, just take it back to the movie again, take it back to, you know, why we're here having this conversation in the first place, right? What kind of reactions have you seen from, you know, audiences since the film's release? Well, Let's I had the I had the privilege of seeing audience reactions years ago when we were starting to do pre premieres and, and uh, and showing different people, and here's what I'll fi I found, is I can tell, I, I can tell the people who are involved by their reaction. The people like you and I were. This is this this was so foreign to me the first time that I was introduced to it. I thought, what people are doing? What this is that that didn't make any sense at all. You know, you can you can buy and sell other commodities. You don't buy and sell children. Who would do that? Who would do that? And when I saw it. For myself, with my own eyes, it changed me forever. And the, 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 the majority of people who are going to this movie now will say was the most influential movie of the last 10 years, if not their life. That, that their eyes were open to things they didn't realize before. It was a beautiful story of, of heroes that step forward. Understand this. There was a lot of hidden heroes, a lot of guys who – who were doing the work behind the scenes. We had to put all of their things into a few characters in the movie. Don't, don't go watch the movie and come away with what I call a, um, a believing that the world revolves around a savior, okay? What you under need to understand is that every one of us need to get involved with this. This is not about saying, okay, yeah, let's go find a good Navy SEAL and have them go out there and do the work. No, together as a team, we can all do something. We can stop trafficking in our own backyard. We can stop Uncle Harry from touching our child. We can, we can help people overcome their own childhood trauma. We can donate to foundations that are making a difference. We can all get behind this. This, isn't, this is way bigger than one person, and the, the teams that have been on the ground for the last 10 years are hundreds and hundreds of men and women who have risked their lives to bring these children home, and most of them are now in agreement with me that this problem needs to be fixed from uh, from fixing the demand side, not just rescuing the kids. So it's a it's a combination of both. Yeah, You're gonna absolutely. love the film. I'm telling you, it will change your life. You'll come away saying, "I am I am so committed to making a difference here. What can I do?" And most people will come out saying, "The movie does a great job. It does a great job of of, of helping people see the problem." What it doesn't do is give them a solution of what to do next. That's what we need to do. We need to give them all the tools of what they can do next. And, and you, can, you can find that on the, the Liberate Children website. You can delve down into that and be able to sign up 
for, for helping out in a lot of different ways with healing the kids, with operations, all of those things, as well as donating. So spend some time there and, and you'll be able to find ways where you can make a difference, not so, just sit back so Paul, and say, yeah. I'm going to just like talk about the, you know, elephant in the room. So I'm getting back channels from people who are saying like the reasons why a lot of the reasons why you guys don't raise uh, money for situations like this is because like the crazy kook bill type shit, you know what I mean? And I know you hear this all the time with like the adrenochrome and all that type of shit. And I've heard five different conversations today of people being like, dude, you guys don't stand behind that. You believe that does happen every now and again, but that's not something that you're like, you're out here like spewing like QAnon type bullshit. Can you address yeah, that? And that's, for, that's why I Can you address that for the crazy lunatics in Absolutely. the background? Absolutely. And, and here's, Here's the thing, and that's that's why I answered the question about, you know, it, it was Epstein working with, with three-letter agencies. I believe he was, but I can't prove it. And I believe there are satanic organizations that are doing really, really dark stuff that are that are doing things with the, the, the kids. But I haven't seen it personally, so I'm not going to get out there and tout, yeah, this is going on here and this is going on here. The only things that I'm going to do – is focus on the things that I know and I have seen for sure. So yeah, there's there's a lot of darkness out there. But you know, here, here's the here's the question. Tom Hanks, you know, we, Podesta, we, we, Podesta. Yeah. We, we had we believe emails in... of Podesta and they ignored them. And that's not QAnon. Those are printed emails that were delivered to us about Hillary and her crew. And nothing, no thing was nothing. done. Nothing. The validity yeah. of those emails was never, nor could never hey, be hey, 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 Brian, Brian, let's let you guys look. Oh, uh, here you Paul, go again. Paul, here no, no, go, Paul, one second, Paul, here you Paul, go Brian, again. Paul, we're, Brian, one second. This, we're trying Brian, to protect the children, baby. Brian, Brian, we're trying we're to protect trying the children protect as well. Brian, if you, if you allow me, what I want to say is this right here. All of that is great. We can have that discussion next week. We can have it tomorrow, whatever. Paul is here. He has hands-on ground, feet, feet on the ground experience about these children. We're and people want to... Yeah, but nobody believes us when we talk about yeah, it. I, I, Paul, one, one, one second. This is, this is, see, and, and Maze, this is not about you. This is not, this, I know, you believe. This, no, this, no, this is about, about the children. Subject, and, babe. Well, I, I agree, about you Jonathan, either, I agree. One, one, one okay. second. This is about the children, folks. And, and, and what we're doing here, you're doing Paul a disservice because you're making it political. And then you're forcing people to choose sides. Well, Let's well, talk and about understand the children. This. this is not political. What, what, what party was attacked? Uh, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, Jonathan, so here, here's – that, 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 that lie that – right there is the crux of this problem, right? There are so many people that are so divided that we can't come together. There's one thing that I know. That we can't all agree on whether, whether – we should save the trees or not. We can't all agree on whether we should save the whales or not. We, we can't all agree. There are so many different things. We can all get behind the fact that an eight-year-old should not be I sold agree. for sex. Every I agree. one of us. And so for anybody, and understand this, understand this. I was with the Trump family the day of the election. I was with them personally. It was me and Sean Reyes and their family, period. Okay. So you know where I stand there. But the problem is this. If we make this political in any way, thank you. And it'll never get fixed. Then, never then get fixed. we're going to lose the battle. This is this is a humanity. Thank you, issue. thank you. And, that, and that's one. Paul, with all due respect, I don't want to mean to cut you off because I want I want to get this back up to Nelson because I want to get this conversation centered again back on these children and the horrible things that they're enduring. You know, I, so the truth be told, that, John, John, so I, that, that's what that's what. So one, one second. So I want to I want to give it yeah. back to Nelson. Okay, Nelson, I want you to handle this for a couple minutes. Let's get, try to get this thing centered because I want to make sure that these children and this horrible, horrible things that's happening to them is highlighted. And that's what we're here for. We're, we're not here for our agendas, okay? I think it's frankly sick to force our agendas and tie it to this. Let's talk about these children. They need help. That's exactly. what we're here to discuss. Exactly. Not one of these children are political at all. At all. Um, They're not right. They're not left. These children are trafficked they're being sold for their bodies and all of us can get behind that all of us right left Correct. fat skinny Correct. in jail broke rich all of us can get and behind just, that just all of us can say on, okay Paul. i didn't bring paul in here yeah. so we can get an argument with ten thousand people 
I brought him in here so we can <laughs> talk about what the fuck is going on. Like, if, if, like, well, if you don't listen, if you want to be all weird here, I'll take him on CNN. To... Or, like, let the guy just get out this shit, please. Because, like, this is serious fucking shit. This is serious shit. Yeah. Well, Jeremy, if I may, uh, actually, I actually do have a question for Paul and Nelson. Thank you for having me on stage. Jeremy, Jonathan, I appreciate you. Paul, I can't of thank course, you enough. Of course, no problem, brother. And I can't, I can't thank you enough, Paul, for being on stage. I, I'm curious, though, did you guys ever do – and this is a two-part question. Number one, did you guys ever do any operations like in the European systems? It's a little bit differently over there. And if you did, could you talk about that, especially how they're basically raising babies and children into these systems? They're well more established than what's going on in South America. Did you have any experience with that? I did a little bit. The majority of my operations were in Southeast Asia and in Latin America, uh, Haiti and Dominican Republic, et cetera. Those are the majority of them. I did, I did a couple in Europe. Um, I have operators that uh, we have funded a bunch of things in the Ukraine. Um, and uh, here's what happens. Anytime that there's an earthquake or there's a war or anything like that, trafficking goes way up. But you're exactly right. There are there is there is such a demand for this that that it's not just abducting a child that's going to fix that demand because you you abduct a child from a healthy family now you're dealing with them looking for that child for a long time if you can find a way to bring a child from the from a broken system from the the foster system if if they can be bred into this as you say then then you don't have any accountability um, we did we did some undercover operations in in uh, in a couple countries in Europe, and yes, just like here in the U.S., there's a demand. There's children being sold. I I didn't personally take down any organizations that were that were breeding the children specifically for this, but we did take down some pretty high level political people, and some big trafficking organizations that were buying and selling children out of out of Ukraine and selling them into other areas in Europe. You know, yeah. Paul, I'm going to I'm going to ask you this question real quick, right? Now, out of, out of all the research you've been doing on this, right? Off the field and on the field. What is the motivation for you know, actually, where does the demand come from? The demand for children, where where does that come from, right? And what kind of sickos are behind that demand for children? It sounds so crazy even. It does sound it crazy, out. but here's the thing. Everybody, everybody that's listening to my voice needs to look in the mirror. The second that we look at another human being as anything less than the divine God or goddess that is within them. Anytime we look at them, anything less than that, we start going down a dark road. Anytime I say, okay, I'm better than that person because of the color of my skin, or I'm better than that person because of the, the amount of money in my bank account, or I'm better than that person because of my gender. Anytime we start going down that road, we start separating from the oneness that we really should be. And then step two is objectification. And, and almost everybody on this call has seen pornography. Just because you look at pornography doesn't mean you're going to become a pedophile. But every one of these guys that we arrested started with an addiction that led to something harder. Just like any drug, that dopamine hit that you're getting, just like any drug, you need something harder to have that same fix. And for some of them, harder is, is more grotesque or rape videos. For some of them, it's a little bit younger and a little bit younger. And pretty soon they're fantasizing about something they wouldn't have thought was attractive five years ago, and then they're acting out on these horrific fantasies. Now, here's where all of the root of all of that comes from, though, is most of the people on this call have dealt with some kind of trauma as a child. The average age of somebody coming out and speaking about their child abuse, the average age is 52 years old. They've raised their children, they've, they've built their career, and many of them don't even remember because it's, it's, it's buried by your conscious mind. And so putting tools together to help people heal is the only way to fix this problem. We can continue to put away traffickers forever. We can continue to rescue children forever. We can even continue to keep arresting pedophiles forever. But unless we figure out how to help people heal, especially 
help them heal before they ever pass their trauma on, then we will never fix this problem. This is why 50% of my time is focused on just the Child Liberation Foundation and doing the rescues and all of that. But the other half is focused on what I call liberating humanity. Oh. How can we help people change that negative energy that is drawing them down those dark roads? I have a question. Where, where, what happens when, when, you rescue, when you rescue the children, right? Where do they go after? Like, what is the aftercare program? Like, what, what are the steps the children go through? Because a lot of these kids, they look like, you know, the life has been taken out of their eyes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Here's, here's a, if the parents reported them abducted, then it's easy to find the parents and easy to get them back. When they didn't, sometimes the parents were involved. In, in Southeast Asia, more than half of the children that we rescued there were sold by their own families. And in many cases, over 70% of the cases of trafficking, it's a familial contact. It's a, it's a parent. It's an uncle. It's an aunt. And they're, they're making money off of selling these kids. It's not always somebody that's been abducted and taken somewhere. But then the answer to the question, what do we do afterwards? If, um, number one, we want to put them into a healthy home. Just leaving them in an orphanage is probably why they ended up getting trafficked in the first place, is a broken system. There's a, there's a wonderful organization that we, um, that we love and work with called the Hope of Life Foundation. They're out of, out of Guatemala. They've helped over 30,000 victims get back on their feet or recover most of them child sex victims that they help grow up and their their system is amazing and this is why i love working with them is they they have um they find families who have good mom and a good dad and a couple kids but they're broke and they can't afford a house and they bring them in they have they have this huge piece of property thousands and thousands of acres and then people like you and i will go in and build a home and we'll pay for a house and this this, this mother and father and a couple kids move into that house, and then we give them three or four children that were rescued. And those children don't have to live in an orphanage and wait for some adoption. We actually place them into a healthy family where we have therapists and psychiatrists and a hospital next door and all of this stuff, this massive system in place to help them recover. And it's built like two or three hours away from the nearest big city. So it's remote. They can work in the, the farm and everything else. It's a beautiful way to help these children recover. So different foundations like that are, are giving these kids a new chance in life if they don't have a healthy family to get back to. Could I ask very quickly, um, you spoke about yourself and your fund being a, a minnow compared to the type of people that commit to this or may be involved in this sort of incredibly evil action. How do you keep yourself protected when you've got such uh, powerful powerful people? Against well, you? that's why I'm careful not to call them out on the public airways of the stuff that I know, but I will say this. I was deep cover for the last 10 years. No social media, no, no Instagram. I didn't have any of that stuff. Pulled down my Facebook. I wasn't Paul Hutchinson. I was Paul Stone or Paul Black or Paul Steele. I had a fake social media and, and, and Facebook and went into the deepest recesses of hell. And I thought that that was the solution. And now, just the last three months, I've decided to go public because I've realized that the only way to fix this problem is to use my voice and those experiences instead of just pulling 20 children out at a time. And people say, well, are you worried for your safety? Not any more than I was in downtown Patientville outside of Port-au-Prince, Haiti at 2 a.m. with guys telling me eight-year-old children that would shoot my head in a second if they knew who I really was. So I've been in dangerous situations. And, and yes, these are powerful people. And yes, they, they are out there silencing people who are making this stuff public. Man. But I'll tell you this. When I was undercover... I felt safer in that place than I do sitting in my office in Salt Lake City. 
you can I, 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 I told my Navy SEALs on this one one operation where I met a whole new group and I was asked by one of the Homeland Security agents to go out with the team. And he said, my, my team hasn't found any trafficking. Can you go out with them? And so I went out that night and I was just kind of seeing how they were handling things and they weren't finding any good connections at all with traffickers. It was about two in the morning and I said, guys, can I take lead? Are you good with that? And the, the one Navy SEAL says, yeah, yeah, they, they say you're really good at this. I said, okay, you need to follow exactly what I say. I said, first things first, I need you to understand that I believe in God. I said, most people believe in a supreme being. Some people call him the, you know, the, uh, the universe or Heavenly Father or Allah, whatever. I said, God exists and cares more about these children than you and I ever could and knows exactly where they are. So if you're okay with it, I need to take a couple minutes and, and get into a place where I can start to listen. And they're like, what? And so I, I have them take off. There. Here we are in downtown Port-au-Prince, Haiti, the darkest, most voodoo-infested place on the planet, and we offer up a prayer. And then I said, guys, I need you to understand how I see fear and faith. Most people think that faith is going to church and asking God to fix things in their life that they don't believe are going to be fixed. I said, that's not it. Faith is a principle of power. It's the most powerful law in the universe. And it's simply this. It's the unwavering conviction that what I want to have happen will happen. I said, it's hard for most people to have unwavering conviction about anything. Should I marry this woman? Should I start this new job? I said, in this situation, I don't care if God's a mountain or a river or a tree or a universe or a person. I said, there's not a God in the universe that's okay with a child being raped. So it's easy for me to have unwavering conviction that we're going to find these kids. I said it's also important to understand that, that fear and faith cannot exist in the same person at the same time. I said in, in, in a way they're the same power. People who believe that bad things are going to happen actually attract that to them. People who believe that good things are going to happen actually attract that. I said I have found children every single time. And at that time, it was 35 undercover operations that I had been a part of or led. And I said, and all I do is learn to listen. I have a book coming out in three or four months called Are You Listening? Not with my hand on my ear, but with my hand on my heart. Because every one of these operations, I was being led to keep us safe, to find these children, this is not a religious conversation. This is something that every single one of us need to learn to listen. And that still small voice of truth will guide you in ways that you can't imagine. And, and sometimes it'll make you mad as hell. And you'll say, you know what? I can feel that. And you're listening to my words and you can feel this. You can say, man, I want to do something. Well, then do something. Do something. Hey, Paul. Don't just walk away and say, wow, that was motivational. Do hey, something. Paul. Donate or help your neighbors, whatever it is. Hug your children. Go ahead. Paul, um, I just want to give a special thanks to Barbara uh, in the audience. She has literally sent me pretty much every contact you could think of for press. I mean, direct numbers for – so when we go to New York next week, um, like Stuart Varney, all the things we're going to do, we can hit these, these people up and try and set up a real press run. Uh, Barbara, uh, just curious on a, on a – you know, you've been in – you was on the news desk, weren't you, for a long time? No, I'm an on-air contributor. I bounce around all the stations. So. Got it. Yeah, I do panels. I do, you know, but I, I don't think the Today Show. I mean, I can send you some contacts. You, you think it's too dark for them, right? Because <sighs> mainstream yeah. media will not talk about it. They just will not go there. Right. Why, Barbara? From, from, why is that? Honestly. I, you know, I don't. I, I think everything that um, Paul has already discussed. I think that you know, there's just a lot of people that have a lot, of, lot at stake. I think there's a lot of blackmail going on behind the scenes, not only in media but also in politics. So I don't think I'm saying anything that already hasn't been shared. And I just want to take this opportunity to thank Paul. It is very hard to listen to what you're talking about. Um, but I know it needs to be heard, and um, I appreciate your courage and willingness to um, to go. You know, you're willing to die for this, and I applaud you. I'd be willing to die for this too. I don't want to see any 
kid go through this. It's it's killing me. Jeremy, I know it's killing you. I'm, I'm talking to everybody in the back chat. Um, I'm just going to continue to send you producers and contacts to everybody that I've got in New York, and um, we'll work together to, to see what we can do, okay? Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That really means a lot. No, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, again, Paul, you know, it's, um, I mean, you know, if, if you're in this room right now on Clubhouse or Twitter and your mind is just at, as blown as mine is right now, just put a one in the chat. Ma matter of fact, no, don't do that. Put a hashtag end child trafficking in the chat right now. Hashtag end child trafficking trafficking in a chat right now if you guys are on twitter i need you to hit that chat feature bottom right corner hit that chat feature bottom right corner respond to the tweet with a hashtag and child trafficking i need everybody on twitter spaces to do that right now i can already see the clubhouse chat is going absolutely crazy again don't miss a letter hashtag and child trafficking again you know i th 